In this video, we're covering the next two races in our iRacing career. We are now at the halfway point of the Global Mazda MX-5 Cup. Here at a track many of my non-iRacing viewers may not have seen before, the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Hey guys and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and are watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So as you can see, things did not get off to a great start there. I got four incident points for that one. But after a little bit of practice on this circuit I haven't raced on before, I put in a 123.6 which was good enough for fourth. So due to the gradient there of the oval, the car immediately slides off the line as we get underway. So we're going to remain in third coming down into turn number one here. I'm going to try and just stay behind the front two for now. I'm still not 100% on this course yet. I'm still trying to learn it as you can see. So I'm going to try and learn it on the fly. But once we get used to it, we'll then get after them. So as I mentioned in the intro, this may well be a new course for many of you watching. Obviously not for you iRacing veterans who are watching this, but for my GT Sport contingent, this will be a new track. So this track is actually the road course of the famous Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina in America. Now this is the road course, or variation of the course should I say, which has since been revised in 2018. Now three quarters of the lap as you can see is around the oval but the rest of it is on a challenging tight infield section which will really test myself and the limits of the Mazda. My strategy here, obviously there's no strategy in terms of fuel and tyre wear because this is just an out and out sprint race but in terms of strategy with the course I'm going to try and stay with them through turns 1 to 11 which is the tight infield section which we're just about to enter now and try and put myself in a good position and get a good run out of turn 11 which means I can use the extreme slipstream effect or sucking power as some may know it as to put myself in a good position come the start finish line. So as we remain in third here this is obviously the infield section here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. So as you can see there's not much in terms of runoff area to be honest if you get onto that grass you're going to be round and you're going to keep on going so it's very much almost like a makeshift infield as you come through the Jurassic Park style gates here back onto the oval. So if I can just keep it together through the infield section I've got to be so careful here because of the stuff that I've mentioned before with this Mazda it's a bit softer than the cars that I'm normally used to and also you've got to be so careful on iRacing with the weight transfer. So we're going to have a run here on Chris, the guy in second place here, all the way down and around this oval part of the track. So we're going to sit behind him, try not to make any contact here as we go up the inside and hopefully take a place down into the heavy braking zone of turn number one. So I'm going to keep it nice and tight here. I don't want to cause any contact because remember we've still got whilst we are concerned about our i rating at this point or driver rating as those gt sport folk will recognize it we also need to be very careful of our safety rating so at this point safety rating is actually key as i've mentioned a number of times before to get ourselves out and up to a license class c so whilst we are going to fight for the lead and hopefully get the win to back up the win that we got last time out at Summit Point, we've also got to be considerate of any contact because whilst you can have as high an I rating as you want, if you're not safe enough you will not progress to the higher license levels which is where those GT cars in the IMSA sports car series are waiting for us. We're going to fast forward now to lap number four. You can tell that by the bottom of the relative there in the bottom right. And we're going to come through the Jurassic Park style gates back onto the oval section here, about half a second behind the guy in second place. So this is going to be interesting because we're going to see 
what the sucking power is around this part of the oval. So I'm going to work out here where I need to be come the final lap because I don't want to be in first because I don't want to be the one punching the hole in the air for the other guys to take advantage of like I'm going to be doing right here. So we're going to get squeezed down back off the oval itself onto the flat bit of grass coming down into turn number one. We're actually in the lead at this point. We're going to break hard down into turn number one. Once again, the guy is going to hang it round the outside, so we're not going to make the position up there and take the lead, but we have gone up to second place. What we are going to do though is we're going to try well not to hit him, obviously to start, we're also going to try and stay with him and get a decent launch out of the final part of the infield section here to give us a good run around the oval part so that we can make a move hopefully down into turn number one. So I'm going to get on the power nice and early here, try and fix up my line as we come through the gates back onto the oval. We're about half a second off, but as we've seen before, the slipstream effect should be quite good and we should be with him by the time we get down to turn number one. So we're going to stay in the slipstream here. I've also got to be conscious of the guy in third there. We don't want to have any contact with him so that we lose points or worst case scenario lose control and go off but we're getting real close now with the slipstream he's going to take to the inside which is fine I'm going to stay down the outside here it's going to make the angle more acute for him here as you can see coming down to turn number one we're going to take our normal line here he's going to have to get out of the throttle because of the increased angle in order not to hit that wall there He's lost momentum and we are down the inside and we have taken the lead of this race. We're going to rejoin the action here on lap number 8, just coming back onto the oval bank section here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And as you can see, I am now going to be the one who is going to be punching a hole in the air for the other. So I'm going to keep this as tight as possible so that the guy in second has to go around the outside there. I'm just going to take a quick look at him to see where he is. But I have a feeling I'm going to be coming under some serious pressure as we come into turn number one. Keep your eye on the guy in the white and blue Mazda here. He's going to take to the flat bit like we had to earlier in the race and he's now up the inside of us into turn number one. So I'm going to try and carry as much speed here around the outside we're with him, we're with him, we're with him. But then I'm going to be deemed to just squeeze him a little bit too much. There's a bit of fender rub in there and I'm going to get four instant points, as you can see, up the top there. And then he's going to go up the inside here. We're going to have to take to the grass a little bit there and we are now down into second place. But that, however, may not be the worst thing in the world here because of the slipstream effect as we've mentioned a number of times in this video before so as long as i can speed with him within about half a second we'll probably do we should be in a good place to take the lead by the time we cross the line so as evidence again we're just going to test and see how this goes we've got to be careful of the red car that is all over us as well the car in third there got to be conscious of what he's up to but as you see we're right with him now we're going to go to the outside I'm going to try and get off the fuel but then we're going to touch again completely my fault and I'm going to get another four incident points for that so I guess bump drafting is not an option here in the Masters it'll be interesting to see how that does in the NASCARs because without bump drafting well I don't know what's going to happen, that's a pretty fundamental part of it, but we'll worry about that when we get to it here. We've now got the white flag, which means we are on the final lap of the race. So it's just going to be a case here of keeping this guy in the red car behind us and staying within the slipstream distance of the guy in first. So we're coming up here, just a little bit of lift off oversteer there. We managed to catch it nicely. 
line ourselves up here for the final big push down to the line through the Jurassic Park style gates for the final time and all we can do now is sit in the slipstream and pray. As we come across the line here, it's not going to look like we're going to have enough in the tank there and we're going to finish 0.178 seconds behind him. Really happy with the second place, but a little bit disappointed with the eight incident points. As we move on to race number two here, let's see if we can do even better. So now, despite putting in a faster qualifying time, we actually find ourselves down in 10th place. So this is because the strength of field, or lobby strength for those who aren't familiar with iRacing, is actually 1773 as opposed to 1318 in the last race. Now this is the hardest lobby I've been in by about 350 points, so it's going to be a struggle, but interesting to see how we get on with this one. And while we were talking, we've actually been overtaken by Lionel Meze. So the meat-loving brother of Lionel Messi there going up the inside, which is forcing us down to 11th. But it's not going to be for long here, as we can just sit behind him. Back in the slipstream, we should be in a position to make a move probably before the start-finish line. But if not, we'll get him down into turn number one. Moving on to the end of lap number three here, Messi is going to do exactly the same thing to us as we did to him earlier on in the race. He's going to come up the inside, having taken advantage of the slipstream. We're going to be down for 10th momentarily, but I have a vision that this will not be the end of our battles in this one. So we're going to look to go up the inside here, break as late as possible, but the move wasn't on so he pulled out of it and as we start lap number four the yellow flags are about to come out keep your eyes in the right hand side of the screen here you're going to see that Mr McMahon has had a spin jumping forward slightly to the start of lap number five now the guy up in front is going to outbreak himself which is going to promote us up to eighth place now that's probably the only thing that i struggle with at the moment with i racing and that to be honest is keeping up with what position i'm in in the race so as you can see in the relative we were ninth last time across the line but i think you have to just keep a count in between the start finish line of how many places you gain and you lose now surely that can't be right so please let me know in the comment section down below if you know a better way of doing this. I'm sure with the longer more endurance based races it isn't a problem but for stuff like this, the global Mazda MX-5 Cup, I find it quite difficult to keep up. But going back to the racing now, things are going quite well. We're about halfway through the race now, about to complete our fifth lap and we haven't had any incident points today i've had to be extra cautious because of the amount of incident points that we picked up last time out but it still hasn't been too bad we're catching on the two guys up in front here though as we start lap number six here i think for a move up the inside of messi but it isn't going to work i have to catch some braking oversteer there these cars are a lot of fun to drive trust me and then we're gonna get an opportunist go straight up the inside of us into turn number three again thinking of those safety points I'm not gonna battle it too hard 
and also the way that this track is put together as long as I can stay with him through this bit which isn't going to happen if I go off I managed to just save it there as I miss the apex coming into the next corner which has let Mr McMahon up the inside which is just not what we wanted I suppose a positive for that though is we didn't get a loss of control negative and we also managed to keep it on track so our record of no incident points remains intact which is going to do great stuff for our safety racing and get us closer to that 4.0 that we need yes I know I need NPR as well but that magic 4.0 which is going to get us to license rating C we're at the end of lap number seven now so getting closer towards the end of this race and we're making good progress on the two up in front we're going to go to the outside here and we're going to end up three wide as we go across the line to start lap number eight now I've positioned myself on the outside here as Mr McMahon has outbraked himself and the yellow flags are also out as something else has happened up in front so we've managed to gain two places in a matter of seconds here I'm going to attempt to go around the outside of the number five car here but it wasn't on but either way we've gone back up two places in this extra hard lobby for us so things are looking good we're going to rejoin the action here on the final lap as we've just entered the oval section of the motor speedway here at Charlotte so it looks like we're going to have to go and try around the outside here of the guy up in front so far again we've got no instant points and only from last race we don't want to get any more of those but we're going to get to the final straight here people are jostling for position we're going to go for the inside and we're going to cross the line to take oh, eighth place just now I'm happy with that because it was a much harder lobby but more importantly we had zero incident points which should help our safety rating as you can see here our safety rating is now at 3.74 and our I rating has gone up to 1402 but for now guys that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one cheers